the youngest uh, the youngest user of medical marijuana in the United States, and it goes and she goes by the name of six year old. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. She she goes by the name of Charlotte Fiji, and she's a six year old that um, suffers from a rare form of epilepsy. Now she would have an average of 300 seizures a week. Now could you imagine? And of course, these seizures they led to massive underdevelopment in her brain. She had significant motor delays, brain damage. She had to have a feeding tube, and she struggled to walk, struggled to talk. I mean, she was just not in a good. She's not in good shape from this from this uh, rare form of epilepsy. Now, her family, of course, as any family would do, they went and tried to look for anything that 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 would help her. Any kind of treatment. They changed her diet. They tried different, you know. Uh, pills. They tried so many different things. And the only thing that was left was cannabis oil that they hadn't tried. Now they live in Colorado where they just recently made um, marijuana recreationally legal and medically legal. <clears throat> and so they tried this cannabis oil, right? And she went from 300 seizures a week to only three in over an eight month period. Fascinating thoughts. That's, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, that that's absolutely wonderful. I I'm all in favor, completely, 100% in favor. And you know, just the propaganda and the hatred and the and the lies and the rumors that have gone or gone out about weed over the years, and <clears throat> it's it's just it's just sheer stupidity and ignorance and. <clears throat> the only people who say stuff like that are people that haven't smoked it, don't know what it's like, you know. Um, There's a lot of people that have been incredibly misled about the benefits of cannabis. And cannabis cannabis has, has known and it's been reported to help with uh, multiple sclerosis, muscle spasms, ALS, diabetes, hepatitis C, osteoporosis, um, arthritis, depression, anxiety. Uh, there's just the list goes on and on. There, you know, there's there's just so many ways to apply this herb, and you know that's that's what it really is. Sean, thoughts? Um, uh, two two points. One, um, it's for those of you who think it's just a six year old getting high. They're using a particular strain of pot that's very low in THC. Ah, good so, point. Like, so it's um it's not it's it's not like getting her stoned or anything. She's not stoned all the time, and that's why she's not having a seizure. And two, yeah, she might she might be a little dopey, but you know who cares? She's not having spasms. Yeah, it's better than seizures. But and two, um, I'm amused that her last name is Fiji, because Fiji water bottles actually make pretty good bonks. But um, <laughs> fascinating. But. Uh, three, like, it, um, Ree's right. Like, people, people have been greatly misled. The woman who, the mother of this kid, votes voted against legalizing pot, voted against legalizing medical marijuana. Like, she was That's a total. Ironic. Yeah, she's a total anti-marijuana person, or was, and like, she realized the errors of her, like, the error of her ways. And there's now, another, there's another prominent person that I'll mention here in a few minutes that was also anti-pot, but what, but. Uh, had kind of changed due to this story. But first, I wanted to actually um, quote the mother on this. And she said, after the cannabis oil, uh, the girl, Charlotte, is constantly eating and drinking on her own for the first time in years. She sleeps soundly through the night. Her severe autism-like behaviors of self-injury, stimming, uh, crying, violence, no eye contact, zero sleep, lack of social contact, are a thing of the past. She is clear-headed, focused, has no attention deficit. Charlotte rides horses, skis, paints, dances, hikes. She even has friends for the first time. Her brain is healing. She is healthy. She is happy. Who could be against something that does such good for people like Charlotte? Barack Obama. That? You you're actually right again, Bob. <laughs> I, 
like I like I I'm, I'm waiting for the part of the story where her house gets raided by the DEA. Like that that's gonna be the uh, end on it. Or, but or yeah. she get or she gets taken away from her mother and put in a foster home. Yeah, I mean there were there were there were doctors too that were like they didn't want to write this. They had to go through like a bunch of doctors before they would even give her a prescription. Right, but, and and there were medical professionals that actually did set this up. But it, like I said, it was the whole last resort kind of thing. Now, I wanted to go um, to somebody else that was very, very anti-marijuana and somebody who personified the administration's current views on pot, and that's uh, CNN anchor Sanjay Gupta. Now, of course, you know, very, very anti-pot. He came out recently, and Charlotte's story is actually going to be featured on his documentary that he created on, on, on marijuana. And so he came out with an apology um, for misleading Americans. He said, quote, Long before I began this project, I had steadily reviewed the scientific literature on medical marijuana from the United States, and I thought it was fairly unimpressive. Reading through these papers five years ago, it was hard to make a case for medicinal marijuana. And, of course, what I have to say to that is, of course, look who wrote it, the DEA, whose head has no idea. Remember, it's on mm -hmm. video. She had absolutely no idea if, what, cocaine was more addictive than marijuana? Mm -hmm. And she was or a bush she didn't want to, At least she didn't want to admit it. She didn't because want if she to admit admitted it. it then, yeah, then she would have had to admit that it's less dangerous and, and isn't as important. Yeah. So any supposed scientific literature about marijuana that was published in the United States, probably within the last 50, 60 years, is all BS, except, for, of course, for the Schaefer Report. Right. And that was the, the famous report that Richard Nixon shredded because, oh, no, no, I don't like that at all. Yeah. It's, yeah, I'll say it's good work. I, and, there, you know, I bet there are other studies that, that we don't know about that were hushed up. Of course, of course, and um, in the in the Schaefer report, <clears throat> it said perhaps the major consequence of anti-drug legislating has been the creation at the federal, state, and community levels of a vested interest in the perpetuation of the problem among those dispensing and receiving funds. So that gets kind of the root of the problem is we're going to go back again to the drug war and the fact that so many of these um, local and state officials, federal officials, and the DEA, and all of that are getting massive amounts of money to perpetuate, to continue to perpetuate this drug war. And the prison corporations also benefit massively from this drug war because once, you know, once it really got into effect, you saw the prison population just explode. And that's right. just disastrous. And, and the big the big pharmacy industry, uh, the big medical industry, has an enormous incentive to perhaps allow the medical marijuana thing to pass through. Um, a lot of them are in favor of that, but they're not in favor of full legalization because they would stand to lose a significant profit if people were just able to get it themselves over the counter or, or grow, uh, it grow, it, grow it themselves, which you know a lot of people would do. And also, you know, there's the energy issue because a, a big coal and big oil, they don't want it legalized either because that would, uh, uh, and cotton as well. because Local that would law enforcement as well also does not want it because they get massive federal funding from the government to, you know, uh, to outfit their, to outfit their police forces with tons and tons of weapons and stuff for use in the drug war. And, and, and the lumber industry still has an interest in, in not keeping in keeping the substance illegal as well because our paper consumption has actually gone up over 400 percent in the last 40 years. You may not think that because we're so digitalized now that, that we've cut down on our paper consumption a little bit, but it's still we still account for 38 percent of the entire world's paper consumption. Uh, each person. Yeah, and and on top and on top of all that, and this is probably the most unfortunate thing, is some uh, legal dispensaries are against the full legalization because they want you to they if if you can buy it at any convenience store, there's not really a need for the medical dispensary area. So 
Fascinating. On top, it's, like it, it, it's, it's just, it's gonna be hard. Like people, it's gonna be hard to legalize marijuana, and like you got to get medical first, but then you got to make sure the medical people are not like bad people, because their incentive structure is gonna be to keep medical, but not to keep, but not to allow full legalization. So there's lots of like there's lots of competing forces, and but and if Colorado for, and Washington can get it done. I think yeah. I mean my my personal prediction is that I give it ten years, ten years and we'll have a majority of the states having legal at least legal medicinal marijuana, if not recreational. Yeah. I yeah. I I think you should except aim. for the deep south, they're they're going to be probably way. Against I, I I think so too. I think in spite of the the. Uh, in, American people spite, in spite out. of all the industries that don't want it to be legalized, I think it's going to be legalized anyway. Because I don't, I don't, I think more and more people are going to start um, considering it an, an important thing to fight for. And and by the way, all these TV doctors like um like uh, like Gupta, they're all all these guys. I think they're bad guys. Like they're the reason you're a TV doctor is because you get paid by the pharmaceutical companies. So. Like I I I'm I'm glad he came out and said I was wrong, but you know year after year, like you go watch videos of him like debating um, people who actually know what they're talking about, and he perpetuated and, that government propaganda against yeah. marijuana. And so look, I'm not giving I'm not uh, giving Sanjay a pass, okay, but I am saying that I, I that it's a positive step. But he's yeah, got a lot helpful. of pulling up left to do. Yeah, it's, it's, always, to... it's always helpful when someone who came out against something comes out for it and says, I, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, but it's like, welcome to the party. Don't come out and don't don't come out for it and then shut up about it. Like, you got to undo all the crap that you did before. Right, that's, right. that's true. I mean, I have, go. I have college textbooks that, that say, you know, uh, my psychology books and my sociology books College textbooks that say, "Oh, be mar beware of marijuana. It causes lung and heart damage and causes psychosis in a lot of people." And I'm like, "Oh my God, when was this written? 1970?" Right. And then the thing is, marijuana is a Schedule One. So you're talking about the DEA agents saying that, uh, co wondering if cocaine is safe for the marijuana. According or to the meth? D but according to the DEA, cocaine is safer than marijuana. Cocaine is a Schedule II drug. It has medicinal value, according to the DEA. So marijuana is technically a gateway drug to a safer drug in the case of cocaine. Well, um, all, all, almost all the drugs that are illegal right now used to be legal, and they became legal for because of one agenda or another, not because it was some sort of huge mega public health crisis. Opium was once legal, but it was made illegal because of the Chinese... Uh, uh, We're immigrating. Too right. many Chinese and people, and they didn't want to let Chinese people in. So, and and cocaine and marijuana became illegal because of, of black and Hispanic racism. So, and uh, what to, you, in well, short, to put it shortly, well, also, um, uh, um, heroin like was actually invented at by Bayer, the company that makes aspirin, as mm -hmm. a cure for morphine withdrawal, and then they realized that it was. More addictive. More addictive. Whoops. Yeah. All right. Um. One final. One final point I want to put on this is from that same Schaefer report, and this is uh. This is sort of a solution that they would offer, and they said, a coherent social policy requires a fundamental alteration of social attitudes towards drug use, and a willingness to embark on new courses when previous actions have failed. And I think that we have basically hit that precipice of where we know that what we've been doing has absolutely failed. The drug war has completely and utterly failed us all. And we need to change we need to change our course. We need to do something better. Yeah, you know? we need and, to change and, the way that, that we approach drug addiction. We shouldn't approach drug use at all because it's a private thing and it's no one else's business. We shouldn't but approach drug, drug addiction with prison. But drug right. addiction should should be approached as a medical issue, and people who seek help right. should be able to get it without having to face legal repercussions. All right, and Sean, the, final point. Oh, my final point is the Democrats should watch out because marijuana won by a higher margin than President Obama did in the last election. And if the Republicans do some crazy nonsense and put up Rand Paul, 
who tr- who who will be a pro marijuana guy, even if he's not in the primary. I just I know I believe him. Then you, you then you, you might lo- if they lose a state like Colorado, that might be a big punch in the face. Interesting. Like, and there and and there is two ways to to get rid of the prohibition. One is you get the states, and the other way is if you get somebody on a hail mary in the White House to veto the DEA's funding. That's another way. So just All watch right. out. Fascinating. All right, that's all I got for you guys. 